let's assume that it's like day one and you have no social media following at all, right? For your work pages. And you're going, I wanna make money on these platforms and you YouTube like how to make money without a following. And then you get videos from content creators who are saying like, do this, do this, do this. And they might have some really useful tips. And then you look at their subscriber count and they have like 100,000 subscribers and they literally have their OnlyFans link right there. You gotta realize that you're not gonna have the same results as someone who has a huge digital platform. Even if that platform wasn't originally for OnlyFans, even if that platform wasn't originally for selling content online, right? Even if they're like cooking food or they're like a traveler or they're an influencer in another area, or even if they're just making educational YouTube videos, but at the link, you see their OnlyFans page and they're like every video is getting hundreds of thousands of views, realize that's an audience and realize that's a customer base. And realize that if they're advertising in that way, they're gonna see different results than you are as someone who's just walking in the door and who doesn't have the option to do that kind of cross promotion. So I wanna give you a bit of context about how I've been growing my business because obviously I'm on here on YouTube or Instagram or wherever you found this video and I have a social media following. So how can I talk about this, right? How does that even make sense? Well, when I started OnlyFans seriously, which was around May of this year is when I started sort of realizing, hey, clubs aren't gonna really reopen this year and I'd better find another way to make income. When I started, I made a decision that I didn't want to promote to my Rocks to Riches audience. For one, most of this audience is adult entertainers. Y'all are busy running your own businesses. We were all busy running around trying to figure out what the industry would look like. I'm not trying to like put another sales pitch on you for like, hey, come look at my sexy pictures. Uh, but more than that, I was really interested in how to grow without relying on this different following, this different base of people I could reach out to uh, because I thought, hey, this is underexplored and really most people who are going into this space aren't going into it with 10,000, 20,000, whatever thousand followers. They're mostly with hey, I want to make some income. Hey, maybe I'm like in a difficult position right now and I think this could help me out as an additional income stream. And guess what? I don't necessarily want like my grandma and my aunt and my friends from high school seeing my content online. So I'm going to start separate pages to grow this. And those pages are going to start at zero, zero, zero. And that's, that's an overwhelming feeling, right? And if you're watching videos where people are going, oh my God, it's my first thing on OnlyFans and I made $10,000. And then you get on OnlyFans and you make fucking no dollars or $20 or $250 for the month. Where do you go next? What do you do next? What works when you don't have that following to rely on? Well, that's the context for this video. That's what we're gonna talk about. And as I was building my pages, I was, I tried to be really careful to not advertise over on my other pages. I think like once or twice I posted like a link and then sort of deleted it after because I was like, no, 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 you got to stick to your guns. You got to really build this out and assume that you have zero followers on anything. And now uh, that was in May. It is now November when I still don't have a Instagram account for my adult content. I don't have any uh, Twitter following for it. I think I built a Twitter page and then I made it private and I don't use it or post on it. And I am using zero cross promotion from Racks to Riches. So if you're on my Racks to Riches pages, you're not gonna be able to find my OnlyFans links. That's on purpose. Like for one, not everyone there needs to see uh, what I'm doing as far as adult entertainment, but for two, like really so I could get to understand how to grow this. And I feel like I've reached some pretty good starting places. So that's gonna be the, the whole context for this video. Um, and hopefully you understand why I feel like it's a really important conversation to have. So the first tip we're gonna talk through is no silver bullet. And what that means is that a lot of people online are gonna try to sell you the idea that you can get things done quickly, easily, and without a lot of effort. And that's because it sells, because it sounds really fun to like wake up one day and start an OnlyFans page and just be making like racks on racks on racks and not really having to do a lot of work, you know, taking one, one or two pictures a week and sending them out and just seeing the money roll into your inbox. And on top of that fantasy, I think we see, especially this year, we've seen a lot of celebrities break into OnlyFans and realize there's a lot of income there. And they're trading in their celebrity status, their fame, and getting these explosive results, right? Like when Bella Thorne this year started in OnlyFans uh, and 
sort of did a bait and switch and was saying, oh, it's gonna be like so crazy and so wild. And then it was like literally her Instagram feed and she made a million dollars. Like people see that and we see that in the industry and we go, okay, there's clearly opportunity to make money here. And the flip side of that is that I've heard so many content creators, like friends, colleagues, strangers on the internet say, this is hard. This is really hard to grow. I'm struggling, even though I'm promoting all over social, even though I don't stop promoting 24 seven, I'm still not making money on these platforms, right? And I think it's really important for us to hear both of those sides out because someone who is famous, who has a platform, who's been in the public eye for a long time is going to get so much more traction than we are starting out without a following. And it is so tempting to think it's just gonna be easy or people are gonna be excited and start buying our content. And I think that can really, really discourage people who are just getting started from getting curious about promotion, from learning about marketing and from figuring out how they can build a strategy that works for them and makes them money, regardless of what other people are doing, right? So like, regardless of how much Bella Thorne is earning, how do you start growing your business? And to me, the first clearest, easiest way to do that is to stop waiting for a silver bullet. Do not sit around waiting for a hundred people to subscribe right away or waiting for your Instagram to magically take off or your YouTube to go viral because that is like the lottery. That is literally playing the lottery. There's so much content online. The digital world is so oversaturated and so you can't be passive. You have to be active and you have to be active all the time. And being active to me, by the way, doesn't just mean like staying busy. Uh, so I think that's the second point I wanna chat about that when you're doing this, when you're growing and you're trying to monetize, you're gonna have to learn the difference between staying busy and being productive. Here's what I mean. There are so many avenues for digital promotion nowadays, right? You could be on Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, you could try to figure out SEO. You could start your own website. You could, uh, you know, try three different pages, one for lifestyle, one for this and one for that. And you could literally spend all freaking day going from platform to platform, posting, 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 and feeling like you're doing something for your business. And I would challenge you, especially if you feel like you haven't gotten a lot of traction or a lot of movement, to stop making yourself busy and start trying to be productive, meaning start trying to understand how marketing and promotion work in a bigger sense than just doing what you see other people doing. Uh, trying to get a sense of, hey, what venues for promotion are people taking that are less used, right? If everyone's on these social media platforms, where else can I advertise to grow an audience in a really intentional way that isn't going to suck up all of my time? Because those platforms, not only uh, are they places to advertise, they're also really addictive. They also can take up all of your time. They also have bright colors and shiny things and they're literally pulling in your attention. And so you can tell yourself, oh, I spent all day promoting. But if you spent half of the day like scrolling through your feed and looking at other people's content and like occasionally doing a post or doing a share, like that's not a full day of work. And that's also not really furthering your business, right? If you're not getting traction there, if it's not getting you more subscribers, like you're just going at the pedals, but they're like not connected to anything, you know? Like you're on a Peloton, but the resistance is like zero and you're just like going and going and going and you're gonna see no results. And that's really frustrating and exhausting. So when it comes to your promotion, to your marketing, keep some metrics and start getting really curious about it in a bigger picture way, right? So not just, hey, am I gonna post on my Instagram today? How many likes did I get? How many retweets did I get? Like that doesn't pay your bills. Start thinking through what is my conversion strategy? How often am I posting on each platform? How am I scheduling this out? How am I batching this so I'm not like sitting around literally all day doing this? Where can I find tools for outsourcing? Where are people not advertising that I could really monetize on? Like those questions will make you really productive and really efficient and help you find solutions when other people are just stuck in the like copy paste mode of doing what's working for someone else. So on that note, I do think it's important when we talk about marketing promotion to move away from the model that says the only way to make income on these platforms is step one, grow huge social media following. Step two, get one to 2% of that following to subscribe. Step three, income. And the reason I think that is not the best strategy is because this step one, maybe five, 10 years ago, the step was much easier, right? If you'd been on your branding game, on your marketing game, if you'd figured out the sort of Instagram fatty uh, 
aesthetic and lifestyle and sort of photography angles, right? And you did all of that in like 10 years ago, right? You did then 2010, maybe it would have been infinitely easier to grow your audience because it wasn't as big. It wasn't as saturated. Not everybody was trying to do it. But with the advent of sites like OnlyFans, with the advent of a lot of independent content creators, with the advent of literally everybody, their grandma, their great grandma, the dog having an Instagram account, having social media profiles, you're screaming into a place that has so much noise and there's so much going on. And yes, you can build a social media following. I think it can be part of your strategy. It can be really useful. I think going into next year, I am going to build separate social media just for my digital content because it has traction. It works, right? It's the proved and tried model. But if you're only relying on that model and you're just starting out, you're going to spend a lot of time growing your audience. You just are because you are in an overcrowded space and you're also dealing with a lot of people who are literally never going to buy, right? People who know that there's a lot of creators trying to monetize and that just by giving likes and attention to them, it's enough, right? They're going to go on your page and be like, oh, that's cute. Move on with their day and that's going to be the end of your interaction. And it might take you months or even years to convert that person to buying customers. So look for other ways to find buying customers. A couple of ways to do this. Number one can be looking internally in these platforms, right? So a lot of people on these platforms have not just a paid account or two paid accounts. You usually can get to some platforms that you have more than two, I think, but generally about two accounts and think about using one of these for just promotion, right? Using one of these is something that's free where there's no paywall for people to join, where you can be actively advertising to them all the time. This is such a powerful tool because they can tip on there. You can make it into basically a whole store that sells other products and services. When you're creating this, right? When you're building out your page, you're building out your following, why not build it on a platform that doesn't have any of the restrictions of traditional social media, right? Where you're gonna be censored, you're gonna deal with a lot of people trying to message you and contact you that aren't going to translate into a sale uh, and where it's really, really overcrowded. Why not go directly into the platform where you're working and literally build out a complete store where you can be selling things and at the same time, promoting for your subscription service page. Incredibly useful, highly recommend it. If you haven't thought about it, please, please do, because there can be a ton of income in there. Uh, some other tips for thinking outside of the traditional social media to your platform to income. Think about how your customers are gonna find you, right? And I think our brains naturally go to social media, right? We're like, well, I would just go to social media and type these things in, right? Because that's where we do a lot of finding for products. But I also want you to think about all those places that are sort of left unturned. Literally try to put yourself in the mind of your customer and try to think of what you would be looking for when you stumbled across your page. And if you look, like, if you can't think of a couple of words and a couple of very specific words, then that can also be a sign of something else you can work on, which is building a niche, building a brand, right? Building a little corner in the market where this is where I work and this is what I do really well. Because so many people are online, right? Because so many people are selling stuff. Having a thing that you do really well over a couple of things that you do really well, that you get known for, is going to get you so much more traction. Because for example, if I Google, if I Google like pretty or something, right? Like pretty only fans, how many people am I going to find? Or, you know, if I put it into an adult search engine um, and I put in one of these terms, how many results am I going to get? And how far in, up in the results are you going to be? In the same way, if you have a specific niche, right? If you're like, I make this kind of video and this kind of content really well, and I have a lot of it, it's going to be so much easier for your audience to find you. And that's a huge part of making income, right? Even if you have the social media, even if you are working that promotional angle, you should still think about this because there are just so many pages. There's too many people in the space doing their thing, putting their stuff out there. A lot of people have huge budgets for this. A lot of people are sort of corporate sponsored as they build out their, their stuff because they have huge audiences. And so you don't want to set yourself up to have to climb the highest hill, right? You want to find another area where you can go 
okay, there's like a group of people who are really good at this. I'm gonna make it my goal to be one of those people. Instead of saying, I'm gonna make it my goal to be like the number one person on Instagram, right? Those are very different metrics and it's gonna be a lot easier to accomplish one of those than the other. Uh, the final tip I wanna leave you with is as you are building your promotional engine, also think through what kind of person to person connections you can make and how you can sell to the people who are already in the building. And here's what that means. When you're first getting started on these platforms, I think there's a huge focus on your subscription price or on getting people in the door. That's valid because if they're not in the door, they can't buy anything else from you. However, that's not the only price point we should be thinking about. These engines, these platforms have tip functions for a reason. They offer a lot of different ways to get paid for a reason. And all of those really, really, really start to matter when we get people in the door. Because like, guess what? If you spend all your time learning about promotion and marketing and you build a great like Instagram page or whatever, or you build a great following on other sites, or you, you just figure out your promotion game, and then you spent like no time on the inside and the structure of your business, even if you get people in the door, you're only gonna be collecting their entry fee. When you can be collecting so much more, you can have a smaller fan base and still make a lot of money off them if you understand what different types of products you can sell to them on a platform like this and how you can structure offers to get a higher amount of results, a higher amount of people responding to your messages, a higher amount of people wanting to tip you or seeing the value in buying different types of content you offer. And that's a process, right? We'll probably talk about it some more in these videos. We definitely have a ton of content about it in the course, but it's something to think about, right? Like you don't have to buy a course to sort of think through, hey, how do I find other ways to monetize on the audience that's already shown up? And, you know, I think that also, it, it also is worth mentioning that that also means your content should be of a certain level of quality and that you should feel like there's enough there to be worth the price. Because if you can get a bunch of people in there, why would you want them to stick around and to keep paying you? And I think one mistake that we can make is get so focused and so fixated on these other platforms that give us validation, right? And that feed into this sort of digital, like, oh, I got likes. Oh, people enjoy me. Da, 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 da. And we get so distracted from the goal, which is like, we're trying to get paid. And part of that is delivering an experience to people. And if they're going to go and be online, they're going to have so many opportunities to buy from different creators. And if you're putting in the least amount of work into your content, into what you're building, like, can you blame them? for either never buying or like buying once and then not wanting to buy again. So I know that's a ton of information. I hope it's helpful. I hope it helps you build your audience. I hope that it also is clear that I'm like really excited for you and that this is really doable. That for all the like, hey, this is gonna be work. Hey, this is gonna be effort. Hey, any job is gonna be work and effort. But the difference is that on these platforms, you can be making income 24 seven. You can really build a following. You can really build an audience and that you can do that whether you have your 50,000 subscribers on YouTube or you are just getting started and you like literally just opened your work account with zero subscribers. I hope that's really useful. Um, let me know what kind of content you'd like to see as we talk about going digital and you're welcome to check out our course. I think it's gonna be dropping in a couple of days where we're talking about going digital on these platforms. So it's not OnlyFans specific, it's not about one specific platform. Instead, it's literally walking you through what you need to think about as you go on any subscription-based platform as a creator. So from how to shoot your content, how to organize and structure your time, how to build up your promotional engine, and then how to uh, sort of think through your process in a really organized way. So we, we build it up. It's really fun. We think of it as sort of different departments in your store and different departments in your business. Uh, and it gives you a really nice outline to follow as you build up your brand, your business, your following, and most importantly, your income. You're also welcome to check out my referral link below. No, I am not cheating. That does not take you to my page. It just takes you to sign up to OnlyFans, especially if you have a page already and you're thinking of starting your free page, you're welcome to use my referral link and then just make sure you contact me. Uh, the easiest way to do that is going to be shoot me like a DM on Instagram and let me know and we can talk about some tips for promotion and some venues for 
growing your audience uh, through that platform. So I hope this was useful. If you like these kinds of videos, you're welcome to subscribe. We have tons of content going out about going digital over the next few months. And yeah, let me know how you're, how it's going for you, how growing your audience is going and how uh, your process is building up as you start your journey as a content creator.